Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we will solve some multiple choice problems. Multiple choice problems that you will find on page number 80. Turn to it, page number 80, the very first problem that you see there, number 118. After having watched this video, if you find it helpful and if you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as your tutor to help you get ready for the exam, you can reach me at Kishwani Prep, that's P R E P, and iCloud.com. Let's begin. Number 118 says that we have a triangle, we have a triangle, a triangle that is inscribed in a semicircle. We are further told that the length of AB is 8, BC we are told is 10, and we are told that the length of arc ABC is what we need to find out. Let's see what, what we have here. Oh, before I forget it, in yesterday's video on day number 34 when we were doing some data sufficiency problems, a couple of words cropped up in the lecture. One was succinct and one was verbose. And I was going to stop there at that point to tell you where to find those words, but I didn't have the information in front of me. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, search for vocabulary words, GMAT vocabulary words that is, GMAT vocabulary words, day 16, watch that video and you will learn the two words. It does not hurt to improve the vocabulary. It helps. It helps a great deal. Okay. One more time, just type in GMAT vocabulary words, day, day 16, and it will pop up. It will pop up. And if it doesn't pop up, if you can't find it, just put in my, word, my name next to it also, Keshwani, GMAT vocabulary words, day 16. You'll find it right away. So here we go, we have a circle, we have a semicircle, and in it we are told that we have a triangle. So we're going to draw a triangle in it, something like this. This is what it means for triangles to be inscribed in it. We are told that A to B, A, B, C. A, B, C. We are told that A to B is 8, we are told B to C is 6, and the question is, what is the length of the arc A, B, C? For well, the length of the arc ABC, as we can clearly see, is simply half the circumference. We can find the circumference of the circle very easily if we know the radius. And that's what we have to do here. So the very first thing we need to understand here is that, the very first thing we need to understand is that if you have a semicircle, if you have a semicircle, and if you were to draw triangles, no matter what kind of triangle it is, if you draw a triangle like this, any kind of triangles like that, they all always make, always make, a right angle. These are all right angles. It is a fact. It's an axiom. So even though it doesn't say that, it is a right angle. We have to recognize that. Otherwise, we're not going to go anywhere. Once we recognize that part, second thing we have to understand is that you see this 8 here, that's simply 4 times 2. And this is simply 3 times 2. So we have 3, 4, and 5. There you go. It's a simple 3, 4, 5 triangle. And if you didn't see this part, it's not a big deal. Just square the 6. 6 square is 36. 8 square is 64 is 100, you can square root, you get 10. So the diameter of this thing is 10, which means the radius is 5. And that's all we need here. The rest is very easy. So the circumference, we know, is equal to 2 pi r, except we don't want the entire circumference. So before we forget it, let's, before we forget it, let's take it right now. We only want half the circumference. So let's divide this by half. So we're simply looking for pi times r. And r we know is 5. r we know is 5, because we just found the diameter is 10. That's what it is. It's just 5 pi. The answer is, the half the circumference is simply 5 pi. 5 pi. And which happens to be? Which happens to be answer choice E. I believe. Yes. Let's go to the next one. Enough of that. Number 119. Number 119. In 119 we are told that we have two products, P and Q. Two products, P and Q. We are told that we're going to sell them. We're going to sell them at the price of 
price of PV at all is twenty dollars, and price of price of Q we are told is seventeen dollars. We are further told that we can sell, we sold rather, we sold twice as many Q, twice as many Q as P. The question simply is, what is the average price? What is the average price? Well, let's see what we can do, shall we? First thing first, since we know, since we know that we sold twice, twice as many Q as P, if we were to say that we sold X units of P, we must have sold 2x two x, two x units of Q. Now we can figure out the average price. It's very straightforward. The average price is simply going to be the quantity, which for P we sold X units. We sold X units of P times the price of price of P, which is 20, quantity of Q, which is 2x, times the price of right there divided by the total number of units that we sold. This is the average price. How many total units we sold? Well, we sold x units of P and we sold 2x units of Q. So we sold 3x units. There we go. First thing we notice is that first thing we notice is that this first term is 20 times x is a multiple of x. This quantity is a multiple of x is 2 times x times 17 and we have 3 times x to the bottom. Let's divide the entire thing by x. If we divide the entire top and bottom by x, divide top and bottom by x, we can get rid of this x. It plays no role. So the average is simply, average is simply 20. Let's continue here. It's simply 20 plus 2 times 17, which is 34 over 2. And 34 plus 20 is 54. 54 divided by 2. 54, 54 divided by 2, am I, if I did it correctly. 54 divided by 2, or not 2, rather 3. 54 divided by 3. 54 divided by 3. Let's divide 54 up here. 54 divided by 3. Right there. 54 divided by 3. How many 3's does 5 have? 5 has 1 3. 5 has 1 3. After we take away 3 from the 5, after we take away 3 from the 5, we have a remainder of 2. What happens to the 2? 2 goes and joins the 4 and becomes a 24. And 24 is made up of 8 3. 8 3s are 24. Since we divided the top by 3, we must divide the bottom by 3. There we go. The average price is $18. The average price is $18. Let's go to the next one. Number 120. Number 120. Number 120 says that we are going to carry four jugs per trip. We're going to make a trip on a loading dock and we're going to carry four jugs in one trip. Perhaps two jugs in one hand and two jugs in the other hand, who knows. And we're going to put them in cartons. We are further told that each carton holds 17 jugs. Each carton holds 17 jugs. Question simply is, and we are going to make 17 trips. Made 17 trips. 17 times you are going to go back and forth carrying the four jugs from one, one place to another place. We are going to pick up four jugs here, go to the loading dock and put them in the cartons. Each carton holds 17 jugs. We are told. The question is, how many more jugs do we need to fill the last partially filled? Carton. The last carton that we are working on, the last carton that we are working on will not be fully, fully filled up, fully filled up. It will not be filled because we are making 17 trips and 17 trips apparently will not fill up the last one completely. The question simply is, 
how many more jugs do I need to fill up that last carton that I'm working on. That's what it is. It's never a bad idea. It's never a bad idea at this point to pause the video, do it yourself, and then and then compare your work against the work that we're going to do together. It's always a good idea. Let's do it together. This is actually a very straightforward, simple, simple question. There are 17. The, each each carton we are told holds 17 jugs. That is not correct. I I misread it. Uh, I misread it. It's not 17 times 17. Let me read it, the question. Make sure the book is in front of you. Make sure the book is in front of you so you know what's going on. A worker carries jugs of uh, liquid soap from a production line to a packaging area, carrying four jugs per trip. Four jugs per trip. Each carton. There you go. Okay, very good. Each carton holds. Each carton holds seven jugs. Each carton holds seven jugs. Each carton holds seven jugs. That was wrong. I knew it was not 17 and 17. So let's begin then, shall we? We're going to carry four jugs, four jugs in each trip. Four jugs in each trip. And we're going to make 17 trips. We're going to make 17 trips. We're going to make 17 trips. And each trip has four jugs. So this is how many jugs we're going to transfer. Let's find out. 7 times 4 is 28. 8 carry 2. 4 and 2 is 6. 68. Apparently we're going to trans transfer 68 jugs and we know that we are putting them we are putting them in uh, in cartons. We are putting them in carton and each carton holds 7 jugs exactly. We have so far transferred seven, 68 jugs and we know each carton holds seven jugs. As we can clearly see, we don't have to do much here. This is not there is not much here. 70, 70 divided by seven will have will have filled up exactly ten cartons. So apparently the last carton is not filled up. We need two more. But if you want to do the work, if you divide 68 by seven, what you will find is that it is same as 63 divided by seven, which is going to give us the nine cartons. Nine cartons that are completely filled up, and then we we now have five five. Five jugs left in the last carton, the tenth carton. Tenth carton. The question is, how many more jugs do we need? The answer is, we need two more. We need we need two more to fill it up. Seven over seven. As you can clearly see from here, we didn't have to do anything here. Had it, instead of sixty-eight, if we, had we had seventy, it would have filled up exactly ten cartons. Ten, ten, tenth carton is not completely full right now. It needs two more jugs. That's all. 121 It says 121 It says last year there were 20 more Republican Than Democrat, 20 more, 20 more Republican than Democrat in the Senate. We have the same total. We have the same total this year. Same. We have same number of people in the Senate this year, except we have but two. Fewer Republican than before. This year we further told this year number of Republicans that we have, number of Republicans that we have represents two thirds of total. That is very important information. The question simply is how many total? this year. How many total this year? And sometimes these people are silly. The reason I circle this this word here, how many total this year, is to show you how silly it is because they go on to tell us that we have the same total as last year. So why did they have to say how many do we have this year? This year we had the same number of people that we had last year. Why? Because they tell us that. 
same total for this year, whatever we had last year. So essentially we are looking for total. Essentially we are looking for total. Let's begin on the top. Keeping, well, let's, start, let's, let's start here if you like. So, here is the last year. Here is this year. So our total is made up of Democrat and Republican. Democrat and Republican. We are working on the last year. And last year we, we are told that we had 20 more Republicans than Democrat. Whatever the number of Democrat was, Republicans was 20 more than that. Which means Republican is simply 20 more than the number of Democrat. Which means the total that we have is D plus D is 2D plus 20. This is what we have to find out. It may take a different form here when we write it here, but it doesn't change. This quantity is the same last year and this year. Let's work on this year here. Let's work on this year. This year, the total is going to be, we again we have Republicans and Democrats. But this year, we are told, we are told this year, this year we are told that we are two fewer Republicans than before. How many Republicans did we have before? Before we had D plus 20. It's not going to do anything. You'll see in a second, it's not going to do anything. We had D plus 20 before, now we have two fewer. Of course it's not going to do anything to the total because we are told it's the same total. And the algebra we show us there. We have two fewer Republicans than before, but because the total is the same, which means the number of Democrats that we have, it must be two more than before. Before we had D number of Democrats, now we have two plus two. Now you understand here I'm using D and T to represent the number of Democrat and, and Republican senator. Number of Democrat senator. And before here, when I write it like this, I'm just using the other symbols. I hope you understand that. I should have written out, these are just, these are just Republican and Democrat. They don't represent any numbers. These, these letters represent number. As you can see, positive to negative can cancel out. It's just D plus D, which is 2D plus 20. It's total. That, 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 does, not, that does not do anything. That was just a waste of time. We really didn't have to do that because we know what the total is. The important bit of information comes from here. That's what we're going to use here. It says the number of Republicans this year, the number of Republicans this year is two-thirds of total. This is this year. This is this year, right here. Number of Republicans. How many Republicans do we have? Right here. D plus 20. Number of Republicans is D plus 20 minus 2. This is the Republican we have today, which is two-thirds of total, which we know is this. That's all. It says, one more time, it told us that uh, this year, the number of Republic Republicans that we have is two-thirds of total. This is where we have to pay attention. The number of Republicans that we have today is D plus 18. We, we could have written this D plus 18. It's D plus 18 because we have two fewer Republicans than we did before. Before we had D plus 20. Before there were 20 more Republicans than Democrats. Today, uh, this year, there are only 18 more because there are two fewer. Enough for the talk. Let's do it out. And that's all it is. Once we have the value of the D, we put it in here and find the total. Multiply both, both sides of the equation by 3. So we can have 3 times D plus 18. And multiply both sides by 2. 2D plus 20. 3D. 3 times 18. 3 times 20. 60, I know that. 3 times 20, 3, 3 times uh, 20 is 60. If 23 is a 60, then 18 3, which is two fewer threes, must be 54. And this is 4D plus 40. There you go. We have 4D here, we have 3D here. Let's bring the D to the other side. So 1D would be equal and bring the 40 to this side. Oh, there you go. D equals 14. And therefore, total that we're looking for, total that we're looking for is 2 times 14. 2 times 14 is 28 plus 20 which means total must be 48. Total must be 48. Let's move on to 122. 122. In 122, they give us a little picture. 
give us a little picture, actually a painting. And the painting looks like this. This distance from here to here is W. This distance right here is W. We are told that this distance from here to here is L. This distance from here to here is also L. And this distance from here to here is W. And we are told that the total area, this is 122, we are told that the total area is 4800 square inches. The question simply is, how much is W? How much is W? Well, we are further told that each rectangle, each rectangle, we are told that each rectangle has the same dimension. Each rectangle has length L and width W, which means which means that even though they do not show us here in the picture, this is how the picture is given, this is all I put on the blackboard what, what appears in your book here, even though they do not give us here, but they tell us since each rectangle has the same same dimension, which means this is W, this is W, this is W, and this, that's all. So very first thing we notice is that since from here to here is L, and from here to here is W plus W plus W, the very first thing we notice is that L must equal 3W. That's an important bit of information. Let's begin with, shall we? And because they all have the same dimensions, they all have the same length and same width, because they all have the same length and same width, which means there are four basic parts. One, two, three, four parts. And we are told that the area of four parts, we are told that the area of four parts is 4,800 4, piece for the part, which means one part, one part must have the area of, if you divide by four, if you divide that by four to get one part, it will simply be 4 divided by 4 is 4, 1200, there you go. So which means one part, this is 4 divided by 4, is 1200. Let's continue here. So which means length times width, length times width, which, which we just found out, is 1200. But the length we know is 3w. Length we know is 3w. Let's put it in here. So 3w times w must equal 1200. Let's divide both sides by 3. You divide both sides by 3, which means W squared equals 400, and therefore W is 20, because 20 times 20 is 400, and that's all there was. There's not much to it. There's not much to it. Let's do the last one. Number. One hundred and twenty-three. Number one hundred and twenty-three. Just give me one brief break I think I'm, I think I mispronounced the word but that's the best I can do let's look at one, 123 the very last one on the page we are told that we have some some guy he had eight hundred dollars He has $800 in the account now. Then what happens is that he is going to deposit we are going to deposit one dollar in the account at the end of week one at the end of week one so he starts out with eight hundred dollars he opens an account he goes to the bank and he opens a new account and he puts eight hundred dollars in the account after one week he goes to the bank and he proudly deposits one dollar in the account so now he has eight hundred one dollars then he deposits two dollars in week two. 
three dollars. At the end of third week, it goes to the bank again. At the end of third week, it goes to the bank and deposits three dollars. And this thing continues. This thing continues for fifty weeks. On the fiftieth week, on the fiftieth week, he goes and deposits fifty dollars. The question simply is, how much money does he have in the account? How much money does he have in the account? Yes, I was reading here carefully, which is why I always tell you make sure that there are, make sure that there is a book in front of you, because as I was putting it on the blackboard, it occurred to me that what if he was, what if you earn some interest? And obviously, he must have earned some interest, because he's not leaving the money there for zero interest. But obviously, for the sake of simplicity, here we assume that he earns no interest. There, are, we, he earns no interest, and how do we know that? Because it says in the problem. It says in the problem. If you read the last line, it says. If there are no other transactions, if there were no other transactions during the course of this 50 weeks, how much money does he have at the end of the 50 weeks? There, are, there were no other transactions, which means there are no other transactions. This is a very straightforward question. The amount of money that's, the question now is how much money does he have at the end? How much money does he have at the end? It's very simple, very straightforward. All they're looking for is that we know he's going to have $800 and the sum of these quantities. So essentially what it is, is a very elaborate, very long, very, very wine, uh, tedious and, and, and tortuous uh, very tedious, very winding, very tortuous way of asking do you know how to add up 1 through 50? That's all they're asking here. We simply have to add up 1 through 50. Once we have the sum, we add 800 to it and that's all. Give me one second here, let me, let me see if I can very quickly find, find where we learned the word. The word that I put on the blackboard, make sure you understand it, the word that I put on the blackboard is not torturous. Torturous and tortuous are two different words. The word that, I, that we have on the blackboard is tortuous. And I'm sure we must have learned it. I hope we learned it. Oh, interestingly, I don't have it here. Tortuous simply means winding. It doesn't go straight to the point. It's, it goes round and round, meandering, winding. It's a very winding, very meandering way, very indirect way of saying, do you know how to add up numbers 1 through 50? No, I don't see it here. So let's find out. Do we know how to add up 1 through 50? Well, here's an example. Here's an example. Let's start with something very simple, okay? Let's start with very simple and see what happens. So here's an example. One, two, three, four, and five. What's the average of these five numbers? Listen very carefully. What's the average of these five numbers? The average of these five numbers, as long as the numbers are equally spaced, they don't have to be consecutive. They happen to be consecutive here, but they have to be evenly spaced. In other words, the difference has to be constant each time. As long as the numbers are evenly spaced and as long as you have an odd number of terms, the average is the middle one. Average is the middle one for one very simple reason, because average is a very egalitarian concept. Average is a very egalitarian concept, which means it makes everybody equal. So the reason why it's three is because you take one dollar from this guy, give it to this guy. If you take $1 from this guy and this could give it to this guy, now he has $3, he has $3. You take away $2 from this guy and give it to this guy. So as you can see, now everybody has $3. So as long as they're evenly spaced, the average is the middle. Are you with me so far? Average is the middle. How do you find the sum? You simply take the average and you multiply it by the number of terms. Here we have 5 terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's 3 times 5 is 15. And why is that? Why is the sum, why is the sum equals, equals to... The average, why is the sum equal to average times the number of terms? Why is the sum equal to average times the number of terms? Well, for, very, for one very reason, one very simple reason. How do you find the average? Average is simply the sum divided by the number of terms. That's how we find the average. We take the sum of all the numbers and divide by the n, which means the sum must equal average times the n. So if there is any way of figuring out the average just by looking at the series, that helps a lot to figure out the sum because then all you have to do is take that average and multiply it by the number of terms. Let's do one more example very quickly. Instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, let's take 1, 
2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now we have even number of now we have even number of numbers. Now when we have even number of terms, the average is going to be the middle here. What falls in the middle between 3 and 4 is 3 and a half. And we have 6 terms. So if you want to find the sum of these things, you could add up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. Or you could do that, or you simply take 6 times 3 and a half and you will have the sum. So it's going to be 6, six times 3 which is 18, and half of 6 is 3. There you go. The sum is going to be 21 and you can confirm it. When you add them up, you can confirm them. We can confirm them right now, for example. This is 10, and then 2 plus, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 5 is 10, and there you go, it's 21, right there. It's the same thing we're going to do here. The same thing we're going to do here. Let's do it on the top. We're going to find out the sum of 1 through 50. We're going to find out the sum of 1 through 50. Okay, pay attention. So, 1, 2, 3, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on, 49 and 50. Now because it's an even number of terms, because it's the even number of terms, the average is going to be the average of the middle two terms. Right here, let me put the box around them. It's going to be the average of the middle two terms. What are, the, what are going to be middle two terms here? Well, ordinarily, you, you might think of 25. You might think of uh, 25 as the, as the middle one. 25, 25 would have been the middle one here. Just put me in a different color. 20, 25th term would have been would have been the middle one if we only had 49 terms. In that case, this is the middle one because we have 24 terms on this side and we have 24 terms on this side. As you can see, 24 plus 24 is 48 and this is the 49th term because we have 49 numbers. But because we have 50 numbers, not 49, because we have 50 numbers, we have to add one more. 1, 2, 3, it goes on and on and on. Up to up to fifth up to fifty, forty nine and fifty, and now it's the, the average is going to be the average is going to be the average of the middle two terms, twenty fifth terms and twenty sixth terms, twenty fifth terms and twenty sixth. And what falls between twenty fifth and twenty sixth is twenty five and a half, just like before. But what falls between three and a half, three and four is three and a half. That's it. We're done. Is twenty fifth and a half is the average? We know the average, we know the average, we know how many terms we have, we have 50 terms, let's multiply it by 50. So number of terms times the average should equal the sum. And that's all. All we have to find out is what that equals to. Okay, let's do it together. Let's do it together here. Let's see if you can follow me. 5 times 25, 5 25s are 125. That I do know. That I do know. That 525 are 125. How do I know that? Because I know 425 are 100. I'm sharp that way. If I have 425, that's 100. 525 should be 125. But we don't have 525. We don't have 525. We have 50 25. We have 50. Since there are 50 of them instead of 5, since there are 50 of them instead of 5, just take a 0. So that represents that represents 50 times 25. And now we have to do half of 50. 50 times half in other words. 50 times half is 25. And that is 1275. And we started out with 800. We mustn't forget that. Question was, how much money are we going to have in the account at the end? The answer is, at the end of the account, we're going to have $2,075 if we put down $800 in the beginning and every week we go and deposit $1 more than what we deposited the previous week starting with $1, $1, $2, dollars, and so on and so forth. Right. That was the end of the page. We're not going to do anything new today. We're going to meet tomorrow and we're going to pick up from where we left off yesterday in the data sufficiency problems. If you want to get hold of me, if you wish to get hold of me, you can reach me at kashwaniprep at iCloud.com. Alright, bye now.